Wow, we just got off of the podcast with Nicholas Patley from Space, yeah. Making Space. Beth, like, what did you take away so far? I love what he left us with at the end, which um, is that maybe the greatest thing that we can do is to engage in deep listening with, with others and with ourselves. So taking the time, instead of being in the middle of the rush and the, the distraction and the busyness and the responsibilities, taking a second to listen to ourselves and listen to and honor other people right where they are. Yeah. You know? Yeah. How about that experimental piece that we had with Michelle? Like Michelle's perspective is different, and she's another person who's worked on integration for herself personally and her family and her relationships. But her perspective coming into this is different because she added in that piece of what if you are dealing with an emergency or a loss or illness or divorce or whatever it is, poverty, where does that come in? So I like the pushback, too. Like, I really enjoy when... Um, because oftentimes you and I were very um, agreeable. We kind of align on a lot of things. Absolutely. Thanks for the alliteration. Just the A is coming out of the woodwork there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I just, it was nice to watch her, you know, have the courage to push back on some things. And mm -hmm. um, that's also really important for community, I think. But Nicholas mm -hmm. is amazing. He's just such a incredible presence that's the only way i can describe him it's a presence and i knew that was going to happen when we first came on the podcast is that it was going to be great to come out of october we haven't done anything since then we haven't done this so long and we landed with glorious nicholas i mean he's just a human being could have chosen better. from the heavens exactly yeah, yeah yeah and i mean do we choose or do they choose us i mean how do we choose do we choose each other what's the choice aligns things as <laughs> it's supposed to be at this point because well, we're just talking about scheduling and calendaring and what a challenge it is with all these really fantastic but busy people you know full lives and so maybe the universe ordered it this way yeah take exactly it. and what do you think about this whole topic of making space you know what an interesting topic. I mean, his company's called Space, and he he create he curates spaces everywhere around the world. He's fantastic uh, and and well known and famous for holding space for people to come in and do transformation work. There's there's space, and then there's space. There's space. Um, I think a lot of people we think a lot about as human beings. We think a lot about our physical spaces, the places that we live, the decor we choose, the car we spend our time in, even our bodies, right? Our physical space that we live in, we think about how should they look and what should we do to keep them healthy and everything. And what I really like about Nicholas is that he opened up the idea to all of us that we can use our, we can make emotional space for ourselves and for other people and how hard that is and how little, I just, I don't see a lot of that. And the people that do that stand out. I mean, you know who they are. You, yeah, you like he was saying, you know, you'll resonate energetically with somebody and that's who you want to spend time with and you want to sit by at the gathering. Or area of a room even. How yeah. many of us are like, you're up in an, you know, you're in a room right now where it's very hot, you were just saying. It's a space yeah. that is, it's very warm. So, you know, who wants to be in a warm space? It's, I don't. It's warm. Uh, no, but I mean, think about that emotionally. Like, uh, I talk about kids at school because that's where I spend a lot of my time, but there are times when the kid's emotional space is really hot, figuratively. It's like they're angry, they're upset. They're, they're in proximity to challenging. Yeah, you, know, you can feel the temperature, yeah. And and it's difficult to know what to do with them. And the only thing that seems to bring that down is just to be with them, to like sit in that kind of uncomfortable, hot, emotional space with them for a while until the heat dissipates, they feel safe with you, they feel heard, and then you know, they can start to listen to themselves and do the process. But Okay, first of all, this episode was your episode because not even astrologically, like astrologically as a cancer, who is the home and hearth space, you know, the person who wants to hibernate in her home uh, or their home. Uh, oh. Yeah, I mean, there are so many times when I'm going to go into a new space or I have to leave my safe space, right? We talked about safe space. And that is so interesting that even going out on the street where you have to share the space with other people that you don't know, strangers, there might be danger, stranger danger. 
we don't know. We just go into a space hoping that we're not going to get hit by a car or that we're not, we're going to go on a plane and enter that space and that people will be close to us, but we're going to be hopefully civil and put civil back in civilization, which obviously we've not seen much of lately, but uh, holding space for more of that, more civil, civil dialogue and civil. It's funny how even in situations like that, when you're going to walk out onto Let's say you go to a concert, right? And everybody really wants to be there. They're really energized by the band that's going to come on. And and you can feel people's positive. Everybody's in this positive, energetic space, right? And you can all feel that together. And it sort of amplifies uh, sound metaphor. It amplifies in the group. But you can also experience that walking into... Um, I don't know, a work meeting that's kind of contentious or... How do you anyway. feel like when you have to get up and do a perform because you're like, you're a, you're a violinist and you're a pianist and you do all kinds of, of that, but when you ho- have to go into a space where a lot of eyes are on you or even this program, which I know yeah. in yeah. some ways, authentically, if you want to let our listeners know, may not be the easiest oh, thing Yeah, for like you. I always have things to say and I have thoughts and opinions, but I don't really love to have eyes on me. So if it's a musical thing, I just hope that the music is good enough that they're paying attention to that and not really me. I'm just like the radio, picking up the signal, sort of. If I have to go and and speak in front of a group, I try to keep it as, uh, like, conversational and informal and unintimidating as possible. I really don't like that dynamic of, I am in charge, yeah. you are listening to me, you know? What do you think from Nicholas's conversation today elevated us in the sense of what we we're just talking about right now about that dynamic of, you know, someone has to listen to us or a, I'm in charge of the narrative. I don't want to be in charge of the narrative. I hate that so much. Yeah. No, but I think, um, okay, well, two things come to mind. One is, and it's both comparisons, which I know we should try to not compare so much as we do, but whatever. Human. I feel like for you and I together, one of the nice things about our relationship and our dynamic is that this just happens naturally. Like you're holding space for me. I'm holding space for you. There's not a whole lot of judgment going on. It's just like, we're both trying to give each other like a loving awareness of ourselves and one another. And it's great. That's wonderful. It seems easy. Don't really have to work at it. But even with other people that are close to me in my life, I could improve in this area, right? Instead of, because I tend to get, what happens to me is I get tired or overwhelmed and then I get a little bit like, I just have to get through this. I just have to get through this. We just have to do it. So I can't really listen to you and your thoughts and feelings right now. And you just need to, you need to just shove it down for a little bit because there's not time. Like, like Nicholas's analogy of the airport, we're going to miss the plane. It's a little bit like that. And I, I have done, I think a better job. They'll have to ask them. I think I've done a better job of at least coming back to it. You know, going back to Nicholas's whole yeah. thing today, what we learned in this episode yeah. was that it's not about going back to them. Yeah. It's about going back to us. It's about going back to inside ourselves and really trusting yeah. that what we're saying is okay, who we are is okay, because we are listening to ourselves. Mm-hmm. We, are, we actually are going to the source. I think that's so much what I got from this episode today with. But- but, you know, there was that point where he was talking about in their retreats when they do the exercise where they just, two people just look at each other for a period of time and they might be perfect strangers. I felt like Nicholas could look right, right on through to the mm-hmm. core of the apple. He could see right through to my energy. That was a fantastic episode. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Uh, look forward to Nicholas Prattley on Making Space.